No, it's great, uh, great to be here with you today. And uh, Pastor Richard, just in case we do have some visitors, and if you are here for the first time and you hadn't gone by the Welcome Center, please go by there. We have a gift for you. Pastor Richard is in Wilson today, and so you and I will hang out and uh, see what God has in mind and God, what has in store for you. I want, do want to ask, because I need to know up front, how many of y'all ate pancakes? Okay, because I know in about 15 minutes, y'all going to start crashing. And I wish I had brought a water gun. Because, uh, you know, my pace when I speak, I'm not, the, you know, I'm not full of energy. And so I hope I don't put y'all to sleep. But I, if I need to come down there, I'll mosey right on down there. And, uh, and we'll talk to each other that, that way. But uh, were the pancakes good? Okay, I might get some afterwards, but I dared not get some before, for sure. Well, um, last week, Pastor Richard uh, gave us a sermon, and he talked to us about behavioral modification versus spiritual transformation, and that was a, that was a good word. And, you know, we can't, he talked to us about we can't see lasting change on our own strength. You know, we can start out making good choices and good decisions, but if we do it in our own strength and our own ability, it's probably not going to last. Would you agree with that? And so we have to have help, and we have to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And one of the things he asked us, he said, well, what about the why? You've got to know why you want to do this. Is it, do you want to change just because of self-gratification? Is it just so you will appear religious look better, live more holy, or is it for spiritual growth and impact? So you got to ask yourself why. He also said, how, uh, how do we change? How do we do it? And we, like we just said, we can't do it by ourselves. We have to be in partnership with the Holy Spirit. We have to have him moving on the inside of us, empowering us, convicting us, helping us. And then also, remember, he said religion requires but grace enables. How many is thankful for grace today? Man, thank you, God, for your grace. But he, then he ended it, too. He said, we must have self-control, which is a fruit of the Spirit. See, it's all working together. So today's message, I believe it'll kind of add to what Pastor brought us. I believe it'll, I believe it'll add and, and, and give us even a different perspective from this. But I want you to know up front that I've been praying for you. I've been praying for you this week. I've been praying for those that maybe that are here or listening that have never surrendered their heart to Jesus. I'm especially praying for you because it's important. It matters. And I'm praying for the rest of us as well because I don't care how seasoned we are in the Lord, there's always deeper, isn't it? There's always deeper. There's always more surrender. There's always more learning. So as we... uh, As we move forward today, I believe if you come hungry, I always ask, did you come hungry today? Are you expecting to hear something from God? If you are, he will share something with you. And I just pray that I don't get in in the way. I pray that this message will, will preach to all of us as we move forward. Now, also, when we come to church, we want you to be comfortable. We want the chairs to be comfortable. We want the air or the heat to be comfortable. We want the lights and the sound, and I know we can't satisfy everybody. I know it gets too dark, gets too loud, it gets too cold. But one thing I don't want you to be comfortable with is your spiritual walk, okay? I want you to be comfortable when you come in here, but when you leave, I want you to be uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Because God's got got work to do, and he's going to do it through you and I. So how many is ready today? We're going to be talking about living all in today. That's what we're going to be talking about, living all in. You see, Jesus was asked one day by a religious leader, he said, what was the most important commandment? And Jesus answered describing how Christians, I believe, he was describing how we should live all in. With the culture and the world around us that we're living in, everything's for the moment. There's no boundaries There's no commitments anymore. Anything goes. Live your own truth. Do your own thing. But we, the church, have to have a contrast. We've got to be different, right? And so we can all grow, and we can all go deeper in the Lord. So that reminds me of this. uh, I heard about this guy named Steve. Steve wanted to become a good golfer, okay? So he purposed in his heart he was going to become a good golfer. So he went and 
bought some golf clubs. He started taking golfing lessons. He started playing and practicing, and for years he would practice his putting, and he would uh, go to the driving range, and he would uh, play nine or 18 holes, and, and so years and years went by, he got better and better. Finally, uh, one year he retired, and him and some buddies were outside one day. They were playing a back nine, and all of a sudden a funeral possession started riding by. And Steve took his hat off and showed respect while they passed by. And his buddies, they were amazed. They were like, Steve, that was so respectful and honorable of you to do that. And Steve would say, he said, well, that's the least I could do. I was married to the lady for 40 years. Now, how many would agree Brother Steve was all in when it came to golf, right? <laughs> but he was all in to the wrong things. We want to be all in. Here's another example of being all in. I love water, okay? I worked for a bottled water company for years. I got the nickname Troy the Water Boy. I love being around the ocean. I love getting in the ocean. I love being at the lake on the boat. I love being in the pool, hanging out. But there's one problem with it. I can't swim. I'm, I'm this guy, okay? I'm this guy. When I go to a pool and it, and it gets over my head, you know, I'm the guy that all the kids are having a good time, but... I, I'm the one around the edge. Y'all know what I'm talking about. How many, how many, I got any other ones like that? Don't leave me hanging. Don't laugh to her, Daryl. I'll be hanging around the edge. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm this guy, okay? As much as I love the water and love being in the pool, I, I love everything about it. But I can't fully enjoy it because I'm not really all in, because I'm limited. I'm scared. I got different, you know, different... I don't like going underwater. I don't, Noah says it's because I don't want to get my hair wet. I said, buddy, I take a shower every day. <laughs> I did take one today. I checked my armpit. <laughs> but all in. See, we need to be all in. See, also now when I'm out in the deep, and I should have got a little bigger float, but I had to blow it up, and I didn't want to use all my air this morning. I don't know if this would hold me or not. It probably would. But when I'm out there floating around, you know, I, I'm locked into this. I mean, this is, this is mine. I'm like, I don't care if you're five. You know, I, I got this. You know, you, you look out for you, I'm going to look out for me. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, you know, and I wish I could be where I could just lay back and really enjoy it. But even then, I can't because I'm scared somebody's going to push, dump me over or one of them horse flies going to come around. I mean, I ain't seen them all day until I get in the pool. <laughs> and they want to start coming out. You know? And so what happens? I just, I'm out there, but I'm not fully enjoying it. I'm not fully all in because of limitations, because of insecurities, because of fear, because of doubt. You see how I'm relating this. So how many things do we have that's keeping us from being all in today. And that's what I hope that the Holy Spirit will reveal uh, to you and what he's already revealed to me. You know, I, hopefully one day, I, I probably never learn how to swim. I heard the best way to do it is just to somebody to push you in, but please don't do that. <laughs> Scott, if you ever push me in, the dove will not be ascending. <laughs> and I'm going to need to repent probably because I'm going to lay hands suddenly. See, I'm really trying to get y'all woke this morning because I know that that pancake is going to start hitting y'all in about 10 more minutes. So bear with me. All right, look, let's, let's look at some scripture today because that's why we're here. Mark chapter 12, let's start with that one. Verse 28 says, One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus has answered well, so he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. 
Now, why didn't Jesus just say, love the Lord with all your heart and leave it there? Because that's what we do a lot of times. I love you with all my heart. And that, and that just includes, uh, we, we include everything into that, don't we? Just love it with all our heart. But apparently there's a reason he didn't just use the heart. There must be a reason that he included our soul and our mind and strength. And it's because he wants us to be all in today. Would you want to get on an airplane and the pilot not be all in? I would not. Y'all seen the movie Sully about how the plane had an issue and it landed in the, the Hudson? I'm, I'm sure everybody on that plane was glad that Sully was all in that day, that he was focused. How about getting your hair cut? You want your, you want your, your barber or your, your lady doing your hair? You want her to be on the phone texting while she's doing it? No, you want her to be all in or him all in, don't you? Or a doctor or a surgeon. In fact, many times when I pray for you, when you've got some, some situations going on, I pray that, that the doctors and the surgeon and the anesthesiologists, they will all be on their A game for you. That they would be focused and alert because you are important. And what's going on is important at that time. We want them to be focused and all in. See, Matthew, 15, Matthew 16 says it like this. Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Will you guys pray with me for a moment? God, I thank you for the uh, wonderful day you've given us. I thank you for the opportunity to share your word and God, I just humbly just ask that you would just speak through me today with clarity, with boldness, authority, anointing, conviction. God, whatever the people need, I pray that their eyes and ears will be open to truth. I pray, God, that when we leave here today, we will be encouraged and never be the same. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. You see, when you live all in, living all in will leave a spiritual impact. If you look at Barnabas in the book of Acts, it shows examples of how he was living all in. It says he sold land, and he gave the money, the, pros, the proceeds to the apostles. He traveled with Paul many years, preaching and spreading the good news of the gospel. He helped start many churches and had a tremendous impact of the kingdom. And this is what Acts 11.24 says about Barnabas. Barnabas was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord. Wow, what a legacy. What a legacy. What a testimony. What a way to invest your life for the kingdom. It sounds to me that Barnabas was living all in. Would you agree? I would love for somebody to be able to say that about me in my final days. But li So living all in will leave will lead to a spiritual impact, but living partially in will lead to sorrow. Let's look at Matthew 19. This is the story of the rich young man. He asked Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, you must keep the commandments. And he said, which ones? The man asked Jesus, replied, he said, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not bear a false witness. Honor your father and mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, I've obeyed all these commandments. The young man replied, what else must I do? Then Jesus got really personal. He said, if you want to be perfect, go, all, go and sell all your possessions, give to the poor, come and follow me. Then he went away sorrowful because he had great possessions. Or you can flip it, great possessions had him. You see, I find it interesting, too, that here Jesus, uh, Jesus actually told him some of the commandments. But as we read earlier in another scripture, he just said the greatest commandment was to honor the Lord and love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. It's because it's different for everybody. And Jesus knew this rich young man. He knew, he knew the heart of the problem. So is, is there something you're holding on to today? Is there something that's got a hold of you? Is there something that you've not let go because you're not fully surrendered? Uh, or you, have you got your, your, your faith in something else and, and you're not all in? 
So I'm asking the Holy Spirit to search every one of our hearts today because most of us got something. Ain't none of us perfect. Ain't none of us perfect. Can I get an amen? Okay, all right. So with that being said, there's five things that Jesus gives us in this passage how to live all in. The first one is like this. <laughs> to me, it all starts right here. The first one is acknowledge and surrender to his lordship. Mark 12, 29, Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you can make this personal where he says, listen, O Israel. Listen, Troy, our Lord, our God is the only Lord. You can make it personal. See, a life lived all in is fully surrendered. Here's what Greg Rochelle says. He said, God can do way more with your surrender than you can with your control. I'm going to say that one more time. God can do way more with your surrender than you can with your control. So let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> See, all of us eventually will humble ourselves one day. And we will bow our knee and we will confess that Jesus is Lord. You can do it in this life. Or you can do it on judgment day, but make no mistake, the day is coming. And if you wait to the judgment day, I'm sorry to tell you, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late then. You need to recognize and honor his lordship today, here, this life. We were all born with the same dilemma. We all need a savior. I don't care if you're the, the biggest sinner in here or the most moral person. We all need Jesus. We all need forgiveness and we all need redemption. And the good thing about it, you can come to the Lord today just as you are. What's the old song, Just As I Am? You can come just as you are today. You ain't got to have it all together. You ain't got to get cleaned up first. You, everything can be messed up and jacked up in your life today. You can come to Jesus. You can come to Jesus addicted to drugs and alcohol and pornography. You can come to Jesus with a filthy mouth and a nasty attitude. You can come to Jesus angry, lying, and cheating, and stealing. You can be having sex with your boyfriend or having an affair on your spouse and still come to Jesus. But the difference is, if you're going to walk with the Lord, he's going to require you to do something different. He's not going to allow you to continue to live that lifestyle. He's going to have something to say about it. He's, going, he's not going to let you stay there. Not if he's Lord, he's not. Not if we're living all in. He's going to have something to say by his spirit, and he's going to expect more and more of you and I to deny ourselves and pick up our cross. Alexander the Great, uh, I, I heard this story that he was um, up one night during one of his campaigns, and he couldn't sleep, and he was walking throughout his men, and he come up on one of the uh, young soldiers that had fell asleep, and this was a watchman. And it was very important that those watchmen, that they don't fall asleep at night. In fact, they had been known to actually catch them sleeping. They, would, they had been known to put kerosene on them and light them on fire just to show them how serious it was. And so Alexander the Great come up on this young man that was sleeping, and the young man woke up and realized who it was, and he was scared for his life. And Alexander the Great said, uh, do you know the penalty of falling asleep? while you're supposed to be watching? And the young man said, yes, sir, I do. And Alexander the Great said, and what is your name, son? And he said, Alexander, sir. And Alexander the Great again said, your name is what, sir? And the young man said, Alexander, sir. And Alexander the Great looked at him and he said, son, he said, either change your name or change your conduct. So if we're going to claim the name of Jesus, if we're going to live like we're, if we're going to live all in, there's some things we got to stop, right? I told you, I want you comfortable out there, but in here, I, we can't be comfortable. We can't compromise. We can't be complacent, y'all. Time is short. You never know when your last breath is here. You never know. In fact, this morning, I went, I don't ever go for a walk on Sunday mornings. But I went for a walk this morning, and I rounded the curve, and there's a 38-year-old there's a, uh, man. He's walking to the store, and 
And at first it startled me, you know, and he, he asked me some questions. I had my Carolina hat on, and uh, we were talking about Carolina. And so we began to walk down the road. And y'all, I just, I just took a shot. I started telling them about the Lord. Come to find out that he grew up in a Pentecostal church. He won't go into church right now. But he grew up in it. He said he had a praying grandma. I said, well, bro, I said, his name was Marcus. I said, Marcus, those prayers that your grandma prayed years ago, there ain't no expiration date. And he told me that he, you know, he, had, uh, he knew about Jesus, but uh, he kind of believed in Buddha. You know, I said, well, did Buddha die for you? Did Buddha claim that he rose from the dead and give you eternal life? I said, Jesus said he's the only way, the truth, and the life. So I, I pray that it made a mark, but we've got to be all in. We've got to take advantage of those opportunities. And I, I believe Marcus is going to be here one day. I just believe that. You know, when uh, Judas was going to betray, well, when, at the Lord's Supper, remember when uh, Jesus told the disciples, he said, one of you about to betray me. And they started looking upon, around each other, and they said, Lord, is it, is it I? Is it I? But if you read Judas... He said, Rabbi, is it me? See, he wasn't Lord to Judas. Judas wasn't all in. And you know, even when you're all in, you can still have your moments. Remember, he told Peter, he said, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, I'll never deny you. But y'all know the story. Peter denied him three times. But Peter was still living all in, and he continued to move forward. He didn't stay in that place. God wants you to continue to move forward more and more. He's got more for you. Give me just a second. Let me get, let me get some props ready for y'all now. I hope this ain't gimmicky, but especially with all them pancakes today, I feel like I, I need to do something a little extra today for y'all. So give me just a second. Y'all, y'all talk to each other, whatever, for just a moment here. Let me get these things ready here. Sean was probably like, what in the world are you doing? So the first one, what's the first one we said? You got to acknowledge and surrender to his lordship, okay? First and foremost, you've got to do that. I've got to do that. The second one is to love the God, love the Lord your God with all your heart. All your heart today, okay? All right? Love the Lord God with all your heart. I want to make an impression on you today that this is serious, okay? Let's look at it. Mark 12, 30, Jesus replied, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. You see, I believe he said love God with all your heart is because he meant living all in. Often when we refer to the heart, as I said earlier, we're meaning everything that we have that, because the heart is vital. The Bible instructs us to guard our hearts, doesn't it? It says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, I think when Jesus says love God with all your heart, that he instantly explained what he meant by that and how to do it. And that's when he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And I need a sip of water for just one second. Mouth is getting a little dry. Is everybody still good? with Y'all that ate them pancakes, is everybody still good? I think they set me up, man. They fed y'all pancakes. See if y'all can stay awake near my sermon. <laughs> I love it. So love the God, love the God with all your heart today. Number three, and I'm not spending a lot of time on some of these because I, I want God to do some work in your heart. Number three says, love the God with all your soul. So let's look at this. This represents your soul today. You like it? Love God with all your soul. We sang about the soul a lot of the songs today. You had that. God worked that out. Mark 8, 36 says, For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and do what? Lose his soul. That's what it's about. It's about our souls. It's about our souls. And it's about other people's souls. It ain't just about me and my four no more. You see, our soul is the spiritual part of us. 
It's our deeply felt moral and emotional nature. It's the deepest part of who we are, the part of us that searches and yearns for something more than just a physical and day-to-day life. The soul is also the most vulnerable part of who we are. It's the part of us that sincerely longs to believe, to find purpose, to love and be loved. It's the part of us that has the, has the void that we try and try to fill with other things, but we can never do it completely until we fully surrender and allow him to fill our soul. He's got to do it. The things that this world has to offer will not fill your soul. It will bring you temporary pleasure. It will bring you temporary happiness. But happiness is temporary. I would, rather, I would trade happiness for peace that surpasses understanding. I'll trade pleasure for joy unspeakable and full of glory. Give me those, sign me up for that. Psalm 42 says, As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. See, when you get to the point that you, that you want God as much as you want your next breath, I promise you, you will have him. When you surrender and love all in, I'm telling you, he will do great and mighty things through you. But if you're living partially in, if you're living around the edge and not fully surrendering, you can't really fully live, I don't think. And you know how I know? Because I've been that guy. I've been that guy. In fact, I didn't have this in my notes. In fact, let me tell you, just so you know a little bit more about me. You ain't got to know all the details, but Sean and I moved away years ago and went to Bible college, okay? For two years. Um, and I felt like God was called me into some type of ministry, and we came home, and uh, I began to have opportunities to preach for a few times. But you know what the problem was? I wasn't all in. I still had areas. And so I traded. I traded opportunity. I traded anointing. I traded traded pleasure for purpose and I had to go through a hard season thank God for his grace and thank God for, for the love of my wife but it was a hard time never thought I'd have, have an opportunity again to preach the word you know what and I was fine with that I never promote myself never tried to come up here and, and stand before anybody but because I began to surrender and live all in Month after month, year after year. Look where I am today. He's a restorer. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you've hurt. He can do the same thing for you. It's so good to me. Number four. Love God with all your mind. Brought a baseball helmet. I would put it on, but I can't get it on. <laughs> I already tried. Why you got a helmet, a baseball helmet? Well, I never played baseball, but I've watched a lot of it. And I know a lot of times when you got somebody pitching, them fastball, them fastballs sometimes will get out of get out of hand, don't they? And you got to have something to protect that mind, that head, don't you? That's what we got to do. That's why we got to love God with all our minds. Because when you're living day to day and you're going through life, sometimes those fastballs come out of nowhere. Guys, y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you can be hanging out with your family and all of a sudden somebody walks by and is not proper to clothe. That's a fastball, ain't it? Because, God, yeah, I see some of y'all laughing. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Because before you know it, your mind is going somewhere. You got to love God with all our mind. I got to renew my mind. I think that's what Melissa talked about. We got to renew our minds. How about the ladies? You might be working with somebody, and you might be in conversation with the opposite sex, and then all of a sudden, when they walk away, you might be thinking, I wish my husband would listen to me like that guy did. That's old curveball. That's a curveball right there. You better have that mind. You better be loving God with all your mind. Okay? 
Yeah, okay. You might lose a, a job all un, unexpectedly. You might get some unexpected health news. Love God with all your mind. What's God's word say about it? He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Okay, he said, seek me first in his kingdom and all these other things will be added unto me. He's my healer, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. See, when you love God with all your mind and you've got it, you've got it protected, then it's much harder for the enemy to get you. But if you ain't studying, if you ain't reading that word, how do we know what it says? Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the what? The way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I would love to have that because I've done it the other way. I've done it the other way and it don't work. It's not pleasing. It's not, it's not good. It's not perfect by no means. So remember last week when Pastor Richard shared with us how you can't do it by yourself. You can't, you can't have behavior modification just by yourself. It has to be a spiritual transformation. And see, when we read the word like that, when we begin to study the word, all of a sudden in our hearts and minds, it begins to transform the way we think. And eventually, those things will begin to have less hold on you. When we love our spouse or our kids, our friends, when we think about them, sometimes we will even act on it. I, I know recently I bought Sean some flowers, and she was like, what, what did you do that for? I said, I, it just came to my mind today, and I just I wanted to do something nice for you. Trust me, I, <laughs> I get it wrong a lot more than I get it right. <laughs> Have mercy. But when we love somebody, we send, we'll do things for them, won't we? We'll send them texts. We'll call them. We'll show them by a good deed. We verbally express our love and gratitude. Can I, can I tell you that you can do the same thing with God? You can live intentionally during the day and take a moment to honor and love him. In fact, last week we, were, um, we had went to a, a nursery here in Rocky Mount, and Noah and I, we were doing our good. We were, we were going around with, with Sean and looking at everything. And Finally, she released us, y'all. She said, y'all can go to the car. I'm going to look at one more thing. And y'all men know what no more, one more thing means, don't you? So we go back to the car, and uh, I give Noah my, my phone, and he's better playing, and these, song, these crazy songs started coming to my mind. I, I like, for somebody who don't sing, I like to sing. And Noah's about the only one I sing in front of him because I know he ain't going to judge me yet. You know, he, he's still 11 years old. He thinks I'm cool, I think. But... Uh, I think the first song I, start, song I started singing was, I just called to say I love you. I don't know where that came from. I don't know. But you know what? Before I knew it, I was singing, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. It's Master Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. Start singing to him. Start loving on him. I'll tell you what, man. I started having fun right there in the car, even though I was ready to go. Show him you love him. Sing to him. Thank him. Be thankful throughout the day. God, I thank you for that sale I got on those dishes. Or thank you for the, that sale I got on them shoes. Or thank you for sparing me in that accident that I was almost in. Thank you for restoring my, my home. I mean, there's so many things that we could be thankful for, but we take it for granted. Let's don't do that. Let's live all in with our minds. Let's take the opportunity to think on things that are lovely and perfect and pure, good report. Let's do that. Let's think on those things. And as we do that, as we renew our minds daily, we're crucifying those old carnal thoughts. And we're becoming more and more to his image. See, we need to replace that old man and live in that new man. Amen? 
All right, I got one more for you. Everybody good? Number five was love God with all your strength. This is the best I could do with that one, y'all. <laughs> That's the best I could do. I don't even know, I don't even know what that'll do for you, but <laughs> y'all, y'all know what it represents. Love God with all your strength. Love God with all your strength today. See, our strength refers to the physical aspect of loving God. It is how we show that we love him. Just like even singing, I'm showing him with my strength, my heart. Everything that we do, we can put our love for God into action. When our inner motivation and desire is to love God, then our actions will follow. When our inner motivation and desire is to love God, our actions will follow. Our strength can represent our energy, our worth ethic, our time, our life of generosity, serving the church, serving other people. Are we touching people? Are we feeding people? Are we loving people? Are we? Are you? Am I? Are we sharing the good news? Like the opportunity I had with Marcus this morning. I didn't know the opportunity was coming. And, and trust me, there's many times that I wouldn't have, have even thought about that. I would have been thinking about myself and trying to get my walk in. But I'm thankful that I had that, that in my mind. Because I'm renewing my mind. And what moves him, I want to move me. And people move him. Souls move him. See, I believe our strength can also be found in our humility. When you and I humble ourselves and recognize that we are nothing without him, that takes great strength. Because most of us, we are on the throne instead. Most of us think of ourselves more highly than we ought at times. It takes great strength to recognize that I need God for everything. Even the breath that I have in my body that I blew up this little float with today came from God Almighty. You see, when we have to deny ourselves. When you and I truly humble ourselves and recognize that we are nothing and that I cannot save myself, as we die to ourselves, as I die to my opinions, as I die to my will, then he becomes Lord. You know, can I tell you, I think that sometimes we get it backwards. Y'all remember when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. How many times have we gotten on our knees? I know I haven't actually said it like this, but my life, my life displayed it. Have you ever prayed this prayer? Lord, not your will be done, but my, done, my will be done today on earth. I mean, how ridiculous would that be? To make that statement, to pray that prayer, but do, do we do it? Do we live that way? I, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing stuff out here. I'm just throwing it out there. But I know I've been there and I've done it. So we need to surrender. We need to have strength that way to surrender ourselves and die to what we think is best or what we want oftentimes to put God first. And I promise you, Father knows best. The word says he will work all things together for your good. The ones that love him are called according to his purpose. In closing, the worship team can come on. Hopefully I won't have too much stuff in your way here. I, I, y'all can kick it out of the way. I ain't worried about it. I want to make sure you hear me this morning too, that this is not about striving to earn salvation. You've got to know that first and foremost because salvation is a free gift. There ain't nothing you do to earn it. You didn't deserve it. It's a free gift. But if you want to live all in, if you want to go deeper with God, it's going to cost you something. Luke 14, 27 says, and if you, this is Jesus talking now, this ain't Troy, and if you do not carry your own cross, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to love God with all that I have. I done told you I get it wrong. All of us get it wrong. It ain't about living a perfect life. 
I want my life to be pleasing to him. I want to be a disciple. I want to be a follower. I want to be a lover of Jesus. In fact, I'll put it to you this way. I like my steaks medium, but I want my life to be well done. I want to hear well done, thy good and faithful servant one day. Thank y'all. That's a good team. That's a good team right there. Let me back on up. He done knocked my glasses off. I got to be able to finish this, brother. Love that. Thank y'all. Hey, there was one more thing in there I, I didn't need, though. Can, can you look in there and bring me that? Uh, bring me that. There's one, more, there's one more prop. We can't do it out. I didn't think I was going to have it today. But we've got to deny ourselves. We've got to crucify ourselves. Thank you. It's important. See, I want my life to be pleasing to him, and I want to, be, I want to share the gospel to other people. And when you're a disciple of Jesus, you forgive even when you don't want to forgive. When you're all in, you follow Jesus, you pray for, some, for your enemies. When you love and you're all in, you obey even when it's hard. When you live for Jesus and you love and all in, you'll stop the sexual relationships and you'll love your neighbor as yourself. A follower of Jesus will honor the commitment of death to us part. It don't matter who else is leaving, who else is justifying, they will stick it out and let God have a miracle in their life. People say, I only live once, I want to be happy. Ah! Happiness is temporary. It can be gone here in one minute and gone the next. You, I, I've been on the road before and be singing, just singing like I was singing a while ago, and right, right in the middle of a song, I love you, Lord. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> People run, about run you off the road. and I'm the, I'm the guy I always got to drive up beside them too and look at them. Who is that? I remember one time that somebody did that to me. I was on 95 going south. This was years ago. And this car, I could see him come flying up on me. So I got over, and it was Ronnie Bedenfield. He was looking at me like, who was that? Can't make this stuff up, Angie. Galatians 2.20 says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Like Richard talked about last week, having greasy grace. For keeping the law would make us right with God. And there is no need for Christ to have come and died for us. Maybe you're thinking today, Troy, I, 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 can't, I can't do it on my own. I can't be good enough. I know. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me. I know you're not good enough. You might say today, Troy, I, I, I've tried many times and I, and, I, and I fail. I know. I know. You ever played baseball? Those that played baseball, I mean, you don't, you don't hit the ball every time, do you? Sometimes you strike out, but what you do, you keep swinging. You shooting ball? Do you make every shot? No. Even the goat, Michael Jordan, didn't make every shot. But you know what? He kept shooting. You ever burned a meal? Burnt something on the grill? Do you stop cooking? No. It's the same thing. My last prop is this right here. It represents a nail. And the red represents the blood of Jesus. See, he was all in for you. He was all in for me. Come on, Carrie. <laughs> he was all in. Do you realize he was all in for you? You think it won't hard for him to lay down his life? But he loved me so much that he did that for me. In spite of myself. In spite of my flaws. In spite of my strengths. In spite of, in spite of my weaknesses. He did it for me. He did it for you, Ivory. This nail, he took this nail in his hands and his feet. He died for you to take your place so that you wouldn't have to struggle and do it on your own. He did it for you, for everybody in here, for everybody watching, everybody listening. He did it. He did it for you. He lived all in, so why can't we live all in for him? 
He's a loving God. He's gracious. He's faithful. He's good. And He's good all the time. If you guys would, bow your, bow your heads right where you sit today. Everybody close your eyes. I'm just going to ask you to be very brief with this. If you're here today and you say, Troy, I, I don't know Jesus. I've never asked Jesus into my heart before. But I feel him tugging at me today. And I, I, I don't understand it all, but I, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins and, and come into my heart. Will you be brave enough to raise your hand right now? Could I see you? Is there anybody in here? Anybody? Anybody? I'll wait just a moment. I see you. I see you. It takes courage. Anybody else? Just, just for a moment. I'm not in a hurry. Anybody else? Say, Troy, I, I, I want Jesus to forgive me for, and come into my heart and make me a new person. All right, well, thank you for lifting your hand. Is there anybody here this morning that would say, Troy, hey, I heard it loud and clear today. And I know this could be for all of us, but if God was showing, in your, showing some areas in your heart, in your life, where you're not loving him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, if you've not been living all in, would you raise your hands? Let me see you. Anybody? Yeah, I see you. I see you. Yes. Yes, there's hands, there's hands up for sure. Well, God is good. You guys are standing to your feet. As we go into this last worship song, I'm, I'm going to ask two things. I'm going to ask, first of all, for the person that said, I've never asked Jesus in my heart, I'm going to ask that you would be brave enough to be all in today, that you would come down here and let me pray with you. Trust me, when you come, nobody's going to laugh at you. Nobody's going to make fun of you. You may be in the front row. You may be in the back. I, but just, there's something about stepping out in faith. There's just, there's just something about it. Yes, you could pray the prayer right there but it's just something about making that step and for those of you who raise your hands and Troy yes I, I need to be more all in I, I recognize some errors I want to invite you to come down as well and if maybe if you're one that never comes down come down do something different yes they're already coming so as we go into this song let's, let's just take a few minutes just to worship and if you need prayer we can pray with you as well come on down <laughs>